It wasn't that long ago that we took a look at the AMD Ryzen 7000 series, but here we are with yet more. This time, we are taking a look at the Ryzen 5 7600 as well as the Ryzen 9 7900, both of which are rated at just a mere 65 watts. The results? They sit right below their X counterparts, which is honestly both surprising and unsurprising. First up, let's quickly get the specs out of the way for these two CPUs that we have here. The Ryzen 5 7600 has 6 cores and 12 threads, while the Ryzen 9 7900 has 12 cores and 24 threads. Pretty much exactly the same as their X counterparts. Now, at the point of filming this review, we actually do not have access to the full suite of information that AMD is to provide us. That's simply because we are actually filming this just before the year ends. And this announcement, which some of you might already know, is or rather has been announced at CES 2023. So if there's any other further information unveiled from CES, we will make sure to add it in the description down below. But regardless, we at least do know a few major differences between the XQ and the non-XQ, and it has everything to do with the rated TDP, the base and boost clocks, as well as being shipped with the AMD Wraith coolers. So unlike the Ryzen 5 7600X which has a TDP of 105 watts and the Ryzen 9 7900X with a TDP of 170 watts, both the Ryzen 5 7600 and the Ryzen 9 7900 have a TDP of just 65 watts. Additionally, the non-X skill will come with the AMD Wraith CPU coolers. The Ryzen 5 7600 gets the Wraith Stealth, while the Ryzen 9 7900 gets the Wraith Prism. As such, we have actually done our testing with the provided coolers so as to provide you with the out-of-the-box experience, as it's very likely that you, as a customer, would probably just use the provided cooler since you have specifically chosen to get the non-X SKU. But here is one word of advice. The Wraith Prism performs great, as it's known to be, no issues on this front. But the Wraith Stealth, well, this on the other hand leaves much to be desired which we'll cover much upon during our benchmarks in just a bit. As for our test bench, well, not much has changed from our previous tests with Ryzen, Radeon, and Intel. The only thing that differs here would be the RAM speed. For some reason or another, we were somehow unable to push the Expo profile on the X670e Aeros Master motherboard, despite it being the exact same RAM. So we have it here at the default 4800 MHz, which might impact performance just a little bit. Do take note. With all that said, we'll jump right into the benchmarks and as much as possible, we'll be comparing these two non-X CPUs to their X counterparts. First up, we have Cinebench R20, and we're just going to keep things simple here. Do note that the X CPUs we tested was used with the 316mm AIO liquid cooler, while the non-X CPUs here are tested with their respective Wraith coolers. So it might not be an apples to apples comparison per se, but it should still provide a good enough comparison. The Ryzen 5 7600 performs pretty much as expected, just right below the Ryzen 5 7600X. We are looking at just about a 7% difference in single core and a 10% difference in multi-core. The situation is relatively similar for the Ryzen 9 7900 as well, for about a 5% difference for single core and a 12% difference in multi-core. In short, the non-X SKUs are simply positioned right below their X counterparts, as they should be. But perhaps the most interesting thing to take away here is that these two CPUs have a mere 65 watt TDP instead of the 105 watts and 170 watts of their X counterparts. To be able to get so close in performance despite the vast difference in wattage does say a thing or two about efficiency. Moving on to Cinebench R23, and the same holds true. The Ryzen 5 7600 performs just right below the Ryzen 5 7600X, while the Ryzen 9 7900 performs very similarly in single core while taking a slightly larger hit from multi core. As for our Blender test with BMW and Classroom, the exact same trend can be observed here as well. The Ryzen 5 7600 completed the test at 171 seconds and 381 seconds respectively while the Ryzen 5 7600X completed the test at 159 seconds and 349 seconds respectively. The classroom scene is certainly the more demanding scene here, 
but if you actually take a look at the percentage differences, they are still largely similar. Looking at the Ryzen 9, the Ryzen 9 7900 completed it in 95 seconds and 204 seconds respectively, while the Ryzen 9 7900X completed them in 81 seconds and 175 seconds respectively. Again, it's a similar trend and percentage difference. Now, we did also test 3D Mark Fire Strike, but do take the results with a slight grain of salt, as many other factors affect the overall score for Fire Strike. But yet again, the trend still largely remains the same, and both the non x skills are positioned just right below their X counterparts. We then move on to some gaming, and to keep things similar to our previous setup and cut straight to the point, we are just testing three titles here, namely CSGO, Apex Legends, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In all honesty, you are looking at pretty much the same performance throughout. There might be slight differences here and there, but we are just talking about 1-2% at best. 1080p is of no issues at all for any of the CPUs, and so is 1440p. The idea of these two resolutions are a piece of cake for these CPUs to handle. At 4K, differences are still pretty negligible, but we do want to point out that it will be heavily dependent on the games you play as well. However, overall, given that all these CPUs are based off the same architecture and of, of the same generation of family, if you're looking to get more performance in your games, you'll still definitely benefit more from getting a GPU upgrade more so than a CPU upgrade. So in the end, what really is the point for having the Ryzen 5 7600 and the Ryzen 9 7900 given how closely they perform to their X counterparts? And with the fact that AMD already has Eco Mode, where it can limit the TDP on the X to match that of the non-X chips. Well, it will come down to just one thing basically, and that's price. Both the Ryzen 5 7600 and the Ryzen 9 7900 will be a little bit more affordable than the X counterparts, while also providing you with a compatible CPU cooler right out of the box. This serves as an easier entry point for newcomers into the PC space and will help you save a few bucks at that. However, we do want to point out one thing regarding the Rave coolers. The Rave prison that comes with the Ryzen 9 7900 is of no issues at all and it performs well, fully capable of handling the Ryzen 9 7900 at full load even with synthetic benchmarks like Cinebench and Blender. It never really got past 70 degrees Celsius in all our testing. The Rave Stealth on the other hand, well, this leaves much to be desired. If you're planning on just gaming and gaming alone, this will still hold up fine with average temperatures in the mid 70s with the Ryzen 5 7600. However, should you also want to use this for professional or creative applications, this small little cooler is simply not enough. Be it Cinebench, Blender, Adobe or Resolve, Anything which pushes 100% on that Ryzen 5 7600 for extended period of time will see the temperature constantly max out at 95 degrees Celsius. Now, it does push as much gigahertz as it can at that maximum temperature, thus resulting in just about a 10% performance difference with the Ryzen 5 7600X, but 95 degrees Celsius is definitely quite toasty. I would highly recommend swapping this out for something a little more chunky like a Cooler Master Hyper 2 Trout. In our opinion, however, we do wish that AMD had provided the Rave Spire instead of the Rave Stealth, which has a copper core and a much taller heatsink. That would have been a much better fit for the Ryzen 5 7600. But honestly, that's really just about our one complaint with this new Ryzen 7000 non X series. Overall, they're just great performers and they boast incredible efficiency. If you're looking to build an ITX setup or you're looking to just play games, the Ryzen 5 7600 is honestly something to consider. Or if you're looking for a compact workstation, that's where the Ryzen 9 7900 comes in as well. If you, however, want a good all-round system that can do both gaming and professional work at a decent price, the Intel Core i5-13600K is honestly too hard to pass up. That's honestly a crazy good chip at a tier that's just punching above its own weight. It's kind of insane actually. On the other hand, if you have the budget to spare, you can also just go for the X versions for the Ryzen chips instead. Because as mentioned, you can still use Eco Mode and bring that TDP down should you want to. In any case, we hope that we were able to provide a little bit of insight. And yes, we understand that our testing and benchmarking practices aren't the most complete as of yet, especially compared to other more established reviewers. But 
We promise to do much more in the future and grow this segment as much as we can. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe to us for more of such content. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below and be sure to take a look as well. Don't forget to follow us on all our social channels such as TikTok, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Till the next one, see ya!